Have you ever thought, man, I'd like to, I'd like to start a podcast, not sure how. Same here. Let me take you on my journey of creating Garden Fork Radio. Ready? Here we go. Garden Fork, making things, making food. If I can do it, you can do it. The most important thing of your podcast is it has to be about something that you are passionate about. It's gotta be something you're into because you're gonna be doing this four times a month, probably with a friend, and it might get old real quick if it's not something that you're really into. If you have an audience of one, that that can make a difference. That's my whole thing here. Um, people watch Garden Fork are some of the coolest people in the world, I think, so I want you to learn how to do this. It is wicked simple, okay? All right, step one, get a microphone, right? No, wait, step one is probably, well, let me just tell you my story and we'll go from there. This all started when I was a guest on Martha Stewart Radio on Sirius XM. Um, and then they, uh, I was a get, they asked me to be a guest host, which was what I thought would be really easy and was really incredibly hard to talk for four hours straight. You would think that would be easy for me, but no. But I talked with Martha Stewart's radio producer. Her name is Naomi Gabay. She is the reason Garden Fork Radio is what it is. We had a cup of coffee after work and I was like, you know, I'd really like to do more of this radio thing. I really like it. And she said, you should start a podcast. And this was before podcasts went big, you know, before Serial and, you know, those trendy podcasts started. Garden Fork's not trendy. So I was a little skeptical of that, but I did it anyway, because part of it was I was intrigued by a challenge. And it also meant that I got to learn some new gear because I am a gearhead. And I started Garden Fork Radio, and it was a very bare bones, which it still is today, but it started to gain an audience. I started to get people listening, and that was really fun. I mean, one of my mantras, particularly on Garden Fork Radio, is you don't have to be a jerk to be successful. And I think podcasts prove that. I'm your average guy. I'm just talking about stuff that interests me, but it interests other people as well across the country and across the world as well. So it's mainly in the U.S. and the U.K., but... um. It's just a really fun thing, and it's a lot easier than starting a YouTube channel, which you might be thinking about. So let me walk you through it. Here's what you need. Headphones, microphone, I'll link to all this below. And um, the Skype software, which is free, there's a plug-in for that to record your calls. I'll link to that below. Some simple audio editing software. If you don't want any music or anything, you don't even need any audio software, I think. And then you need a host. So much like everything else in the world, you get what you pay for with a podcast host. You can self-host it on a WordPress blog with a plugin that creates what's called an RSS compliant feed. I'm not thrilled by that. I used to do that. I'm not real big. Those plugins can be kind of kludgy. And if you decide to change plugins, it's a real pain to change the whole thing. You can go the free route. There's a bunch of sites that offer free podcast hosting, but it's... Free means free. You're not getting some of the bells and whistles you want. Um, Garden Fork is distributed over multiple platforms and you have to be where your listeners are. I learned that because um, I'm reaching out to you, right? And are you in your car? Are you at your desktop? You know, think about that. I use a host called Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. They have a very inexpensive package for like $5 a month. I get the $15 a month package. If you want to create a podcast, I think you're going to need to do the $15 a month thing. If you want to do a podcast every week, so that's four podcasts at about a half hour each, um, it's a $15 package. If you want, you could go the free route, you know, see what you like, see if you like making podcasts, I guess. I use Libsyn. The tech support is phenomenal. They're not paying me to say this. I don't, I don't get any affiliate link from them. I just think they're a good company. And um, with this and Libsyn, you can be like big. There are free audio editing software packages for PCs and Macs. GarageBand is perfect if you have an Apple computer. You just, I think that the simpler the better. I hate podcasts that have these really polished, produced intros, and then it's just a guy droning. It just feels fake. It feels like somebody like, trying to be something big, you know, and... Well, I just don't like that. Um, that's an opinion of mine. Let me know your opinions about that in the comments below here. It's, I do, we have simple music and I go, hey, it's Eric, thanks for listening. The other key thing I've learned is that I 
visualize talking to an individual when I do the podcast. It's not, hey, you all, uh, thanks for listening or whatever. I go, hi, thank you for listening because I have an idea. Well, I know who your average, the average listener is um, doing this long enough and getting all the emails and comments and stuff. So I kind of have that image in my mind and I have a list of things I want to share and I have um, a cool friend who helps. I've, oh, I found that I am better having a two-person podcast than a one-person podcast. I do not use a script. I have some notes written down. Um, I just, when I find interesting articles or web links, I email them to myself. And in the subject line, I put GFR, Garden Fork Radio. And then when it comes time to, to get ready for the podcast, I just look for the GFR subject lines and I send those to whoever I'm going to have on the show and go, here's what I'm thinking about. They send me some information they want to talk about. We hit the record button and we go. The show used to be a lot longer. It was like an hour or an hour and 10 minutes. Now it's 30 minutes. I think that works better. Most people listening to Garden Fork Radio are in the car going to work. 30 minute commute, done with the show. If you want to be scripted, that's totally fine. I just think reading from a script, unless you're really good at it, it sounds fake. And I'm all about not fake, as you realize, because I didn't even shave today. Um, but that's because I'm sick. That's my excuse. And I'm trying to say umless in the show. As you'll notice, this says, um, I just said, um, this says, ah, with a red line through it. Cause I also, in the podcast, I say, ah, a lot. And I'm trying to cut that out. The transformative moment for me was when I started getting emails going, I love your show. You're making something that relates to people. And that kind of relatability is harder and harder to create in this world where everyone's just looking at their phones, right? So you're, I don't know, I just love that. But that that was when I realized that I was doing something that people liked. And even when I didn't feel like doing it, I would do it because I was like, well, like these people would like to hear from me. Office coworker number one, office coworker number two, office. I have a simple boom arm with some sound absorbing foam that I jammed in here with a holder and a microphone. And this is called a, a, a pop screen. You need one of these, it's kind of important. It, they're like five bucks. I bought a whole stack of this sound absorbing foam and I put this um, right below the microphone on the keyboard. I put it around the computer screens just to kind of deaden the echo. Um, you, the best place to record a podcast is in a coat closet, really, because there's so much cloth, it absorbs any of the echo. Uh, an empty room is the worst place. Uh, echo, people will just delete your podcast if it sounds bad. And I'm surprised at some podcasts from big companies and how bad they sound. If you're going to be recording with another person and they're both in the same room, this is an amazing little recorder. I'll link below to it. Um, I think it's like $120 and it, the sound, it sounds like NPR, you know, be sure to record in wave format, not MP3 setting on the back here. I set this to automatic. I set it down. You can just set it on a table like this, put a towel down or like a bath carpet, bath rug, something to absorb echo. Again, put this down. This works really well as well. Um, that's two microphones. It's, I don't know. I just really like this thing. You know, I'm here. The other person, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> the other person's here, works well. If you're gonna record outside with any microphone, you want what's called a dead cat on here. I mean, this looks like some weird Smurf character, I know, but it cuts the wind noise, and I, I think this is all a five bucks, so, you know. Again, I'll have a whole list of this stuff below, but, um, you know, you could go outside and you could hold it here between you and, the, you want equidistant between you and the other person. Closer is better but make sure both of you are equidistant from the microphones or else it'll, what will sound weird. If you're recording on Skype, which is what I do a lot because my friends are in other parts of the country, a good USB headset, uh, it'll be in the equipment list below, but um, this is amazing. And the key is to make sure the person is not in an echoey room. So you might have to kind of say, um, you know, is there a room that's quieter? Uh, people kind of think that they're on the cell phone. There's dogs barking in the background. Sometimes people are eating potato chips and I'm like, it's happened. <laughs> Little trick here. If you're recording and, and the other person is much louder and they're peaking your meters, ask them to take the microphone and put it 
level with their nose. Level with their nose. That does a lot to cut down on that kind of peaking audio. One of the coolest thing now is with the, um, the paid host, Libsyn, is that Garden Fork Radio is available on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. You can listen to Garden Fork Radio right here. How cool is that? Garden Fork Radio podcast on your YouTube player, wherever you're playing your YouTubes. It's right there. I'll see you in the next video, or I'll see you in the next podcast.